What is the Gospel of Thomas? People frequently ask me about the Gospel, so-called Gospel of Thomas, and other writings from the time of Christ that are not included in the Bible. They want to know why they were not included. And this is something that is a natural, human, fleshly way of thinking. God wrote the Bible by the Holy Spirit working through many different men, but the Holy Spirit wrote it through their hand. The Bible is exactly the Word of God, and nothing outside of the Bible is in the same category. It's not the Word of God. First, let's look at what these historic writings really are, including this alleged Gospel of Thomas. They may or may not be what they claim to be, which is accurate depiction of the time. It's even disputed as to whether Thomas himself actually wrote this gospel. We know that technology can fake almost anything these days, so we don't really know if they were written at the time of Christ, or by whom. But let's just say for the sake of argument, in the case of the most popular one, the so-called Gospel of Thomas, I will refer to it as the Writings of Thomas, that if it was really written by Thomas, and if it was in the time of Christ, that makes it an historical document of that time, but not equal to the Word of God. God by the Holy Spirit, working through men, did indeed write the Bible exactly as he chose to. If you don't agree with that, then you have no absolute truth to base your faith on. You have to just throw it all out. We have to stand on the truth that God gave us. And we have to base that on the one absolute we have, which is the Word of God. So even the writings of Thomas, even if it's an accurate account, which it's, I will get to in a minute, it's not really an account, it's a list of scriptures, but even if it's accurate, it still would not be the word of God. Do you see? It was found along with many other Gnostic documents in Egypt in 1945. Now, the Gospel of Thomas has certain aspects of it, so-called gospel, that agrees with the Bible, but it has much that is perverted. This writing of Thomas is a list of 114 scriptures, so-called scriptures. Half of them really are. They're direct quotes from the actual Bible, direct quotes from what Jesus said. So, people look at that and they're familiar with these sayings of Jesus. They're in the Bible and they say, oh, well, this must be true. But the other half that are spread out throughout this list of scriptures are complete lies. They're made up statements that Jesus never said that do not even agree with what he said in the Bible. Some of them are even quotes from the Quran because they are Gnostic writings, which means that Thomas was a Gnostic. The Gnostics were a radical and perverted group rejected by the church who did not believe even that God created the earth, but they believed that an evil, twisted being pretending to be God did. The Gnostics say that that is why mankind is flawed. They say that the real God sent out just enough of his divine spark to have some good in the earth, and on and on. They say there's no salvation, no body of Christ. They are a totally demonic religion. They exist today. The Gnostic Church began to revive again after these writings were discovered in 1945, and there are Gnostic churches in the earth today. So why would any Christian, any Christian, want to assume any credibility from people 
who didn't even believe that God created the earth, that didn't even believe and don't even believe that there is such a thing as salvation. Why would we give this any credibility? The Gnostics are evil, and they embrace evil. Even as the creation, they say, is from this supreme evil one. And Thomas was among these deluded people. The only truth is already in the Bible. God put it there. You have no need to look further. There is more knowledge in the Bible than we will ever be able to comprehend until we're glorified. You don't have to find other things to learn. Learn the word of God, the true word, and understand how dangerous it is to delve into all of these exterior writings. We know who the Gnostics are, who are responsible for most of the historical writings that surface from the time of Jesus, but there are others. However, none of them are the word of God. This is what I want to get through to you. Nor are they equal to the word of God. It is just further efforts on Satan's part to distract, pervert, and disqualify as many Christians as possible. I want to read you from Second Peter, and I want you to think about the Gnostics and what they believe that evil created the earth, that there is no salvation, that there is nothing of good in what they say. And I want you to stay away from it all. Don't be enticed and corrupted by these alleged gospels. And the word gospel means absolute truth, which is why I don't even like saying the gospel of Thomas, because it's not absolute truth. It is just a mess. So it is the writing of Thomas, allegedly. Judas also wrote a so-called gospel in the group of Gnostic papers. And you can imagine the filth that he put forth, the one Jesus called the son of perdition. Among all the other lies that the gospel of Judas says, he says that he, Judas, sacrificed Jesus to the demons. There was no salvation, no resurrection, nothing. He hijacked the great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to him, and killed him on the cross and gave him to the demons. I mean, really, why would you want to listen to such stuff? Now, Second Peter 2, 1 and 2 says, But there were also false prophets. Now think about the Gnostics and what they believe in these writings as I read this to you. There were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth is blasphemed. Then we go to verses 12 through 20. But these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own corruption. Peter was talking about the Gnostics and anyone who agreed with them. Then to continue in verse 13, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice, Restrain the madness of the prophet. Yes, it is a type of insanity, madness. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's the lake of fire, eternal condemnation. 
for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of this world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. He's talking about this very group. He's talking about this Gnostic philosophy. So stay away from it all, because in it there is nothing but destruction. And this is all very similar to all the other deceptions that have come forth that so intrigue many Christians. Things like the Da Vinci Codes and Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Ignore all such abominations. They can only harm you, and they all have one common factor. They deny the cross. They deny the blood sacrifice on the cross. They deny salvation. They deny resurrection. They deny any part of what Jesus came to earth to give us. They deny any redemption that is available to us. And they can only bring you harm and can cost you your future without Christ if you're not willing to avoid them. Your future with Christ can be eliminated if you follow these type of things. And you will put yourself under the curse of false doctrine if you do. And this is the same as when the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. And we look at Matthew 4, 4, where he says, But he answered and said, he answered the devil, when the devil tried to get him to obey him and do the things that he was telling them to do. Jesus said, Man shall live. I'm sorry, he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it's not the natural things of this earth that we live by, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is the word of God. God is his word. He is his word as he caused it to be written in the Bible. In John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word in the gospel of John, the true gospel. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God and his word are one. You have the Holy Spirit. And he will lead you and he will guide you into all truth. To all truth. In John 14, 16, and 17, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That's a capital H on helper, meaning the Holy Spirit. That he may abide with you forever. Forever. He's giving us the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with us forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you meaning the future on the day of Pentecost when all are baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, which is the new birth. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the new birth. You receive salvation when you receive Jesus, but that's a decision of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the supernatural force that causes you to be born again of the Spirit. 
And so we see this and we must understand that this is the word, nothing else. This is the word. In John 4, 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. His truth. His is the only truth. John 8.32, the scripture which is over this ministry, which God told me to place over this ministry, where Jesus says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But you have to know it for it to make you free. And you have to be dedicated to the truth and only the truth. So always, always, Embrace the truth and do not accept anything outside the Bible, which is the word of God, which is God himself, as gospel. This word is gospel. Everything else is just writing by men. Some of it may be true. Most of it isn't. But it's not the word of God. That's what you have to keep in mind. And don't allow yourself to be corrupted by it. Remember, the better you know the word, the better you know God. Amen.